I'm Judy with Patterns for Pirates and I'm going to sew up some boxer briefs with you today. I have the elastic waistband and cheeky option so I'm going to hem the legs. Um, I'm using this beautiful floral fabric so you'll be able to tell wrong side and right side. I'm going to use this for all the pieces. Um, let's get started. I'm going to be using my serger for most of the construction and my regular sewing machine to attach the waistband and to hem. You can also use a cover stitch machine if you're lucky enough to have one of those. The only thing I've done prior to this video is I went ahead and pressed a memory hem on my cheeky leg line and so I went ahead and pressed that as you can see. All right, I'm gonna grab all my center pieces. So my center front, my center back, and my crotch liner. Here's my center back. I'm gonna put right sides together with my center front at that bottom notch. And then I'm gonna take my liner and I'm going to align it right side to wrong side of the back piece. This will hide our seam allowance inside this seam. So I'm going to add another pin just on the outer section and then one more at the beginning. There we go. And we're going to stitch this up with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I like to mention that since it's a little different from most of my patterns. I like to do a bit smaller seam allowance for underwear, swimwear, lingerie. So you're just trimming off a little eighth of an inch. You can see my little ones down there playing with Nana. Alright, you're going to flip your liner and it should align with your main piece nicely and perfectly and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sewing machine and I'm just going to baste along these edges. I like to use um, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just use my longest straight stitch. This is just a temporary um, hold to hold it in place. That way when I sew the next seam I don't have to worry about keeping these aligned will be held in place by this basting stitch. Again, these raw edges right here should align perfectly if you line them up perfectly right here. finish this edge off you can finish this edge off with a serger or a zigzag or whatever you prefer sometimes I do and sometimes I forget it doesn't make a big difference to me either way when I'm wearing them whether they're finished off or not if your fabric rolls really bad you might want to finish that off all right so here's my leg pieces my main leg pieces I'm gonna fold them in half right sides together just like this and I'm gonna stitch this little inseam right here there we go I'm just gonna repeat with the other leg again folding it in half right sides together stitching the inseam lose my little snips. All right, so we're going to grab one leg. It does not matter which one. And we're going to grab our center pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by aligning the notches right sides together. So here is two back notches. I'm going to align those right sides together. And then I'm going to Loop around to the front and I align my single notches on the front. 
Now I'm just gonna go anywhere else I need to add pins or clips. Sorry about that little, my um, camera battery died so I had to stop and get a new one. I have just clipped my back notch, my front notch, and now I'm just adding some all along this U shape to um, until I'm comfortable with it all lining up and looking nice and even. I want to point out that the crotch liner seam and the leg seam do not align, and that's okay. They will not align, so don't try to pin those together. I wanted the crotch iron to kind of go in front and behind that center point, and so that's why this back seam is kind of back further than the leg seam. Alright, so there we have it. They're right sides together, front notch, back notch pinned in between, and I'm just gonna serge this with that same 3 8 seam allowance. My husband's mowing the lawn, <laughs> so excuse that. this together because then it gives me that line to, to trim off exactly an eighth of an inch. It's just a nice little guide. You want to press towards the legs away from the center. You can also top stitch this if you would like. I actually really like to top stitch um, my endies. I feel like the seam lays flatter and smoother and more comfortably. So I'm going to do that really quick on here. I like to use my triple step zigzag. It's my favorite super stretchy stretch stitch. You can also use a cover stitch machine if you have one. Or another stretch stitch that you like the look of. It does need to be a high stretch stitch because undies are very fitted. And the fabric that you use for undies are going to have a lot of stretch. your stretch stitch to stretch as much as your fabric can or you might pop stitches. Absolutely press this again and we're just going to repeat on the other side so we're just going to attach this center piece to this leg now again right sides together match those notches first and then add any more pins that you need
Okay, so we're really starting to look like a little pair of boxers here. Be it um, super cheeky ones. And let's go ahead and add the waistband. Here's my waistband piece cut. Um, we're gonna use our sewing machine for this. I like to set it on a normal zigzag and make it as wide as possible. Mine goes to a seven width. And then I like to make it slightly um, shorter, um, somewhere around a one um, stitch length. Um, it, it doesn't matter which way you sew it, right sides or wrong sides, as long as both your threads match and um, I have the same color in both of mine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna butt them up nice and tightly. They can overlap a tiny bit, not much. You really want them butted up as mostly, as closely as you can. And you're just gonna zigzag straddling that butt up line. Now I went up and down it. That's it. You don't need to go over and over and over again. You're going to put too many holes in your elastic if you do it a ton. This isn't going to get that much strain because it is getting sewn all along the bottom of the underwear. Um, so it shouldn't get that much strain. So don't worry about um, you know, going over it a million times. But that nice wide zigzag should hold it in place and it looks really nice. It's nice and flat since we butted them up instead of overlapping them. If you're having a hard time with your elastic, a good trick is to cut a small piece of woven fabric or like use a little tiny piece of ribbon um, that is this height or length and that will help you stitch it on and will also give it some more stability if you're worried about um, it being strong enough. Okay, so now I'm going to mark this into quarter points using pens or clips. A marking tool of some sort would also work. You don't want to do anything permanent because you this is an exposed elastic so you'll be able to see all parts of this elastic once it's done. This is just like a um, underwear elastic. Underwear elastic tends to be like plusher and softer. Um, I highly prefer it to regular elastic because I like my undies to be soft and comfy. So I would recommend doing the extra order or trip to the store. I just got this um, pink one at my local Joann's. I'm just going to mark my quarter points along the top of my <clears throat> underwear. But you can get underwear elastic at um, your local craft store like I did or um, online. It's usually called underwear elastic, plush back elastic, plush back elastic. Um, and you can really get any width that you like. The thicker the elastic, mine's pretty thick, the thicker the elastic, the tighter it will feel. So if you prefer looser, you can get a smaller elastic. Um, and the th I just kind of like the way the thicker it looks. Um, it will make the rise a little bit higher that I'm using a thicker elastic. Um, I wouldn't go so small as like a Pico. You might need to tighten it up if you go so small as a Pico elastic, which is a really, really thin um, little elastic. I don't. Same as like fold over elastic. If you're going to use fold over elastic, you probably need to tighten it up a little bit. Um, this is going to feel a lot snugger and tighter than those teeny tiny little elastics. Alright, so what we're going to do now, which actually I probably should have done prior to marking my quarter points, is I am either going to take some kind of marking tool and mark all the way around 
three eighths of an inch. Or what I like to do is I like to baste. I feel like it's a little quicker and um, it comes out really easily. And you can, you can do a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. Um, it's not gonna make, it's only gonna change the rise by an eighth of an inch, which you're never gonna notice. Um, but if you don't wanna trim off any of the underwear after attaching the elastic, you can go down to a quarter of an inch. It doesn't matter whatever your preference is. I'm gonna do the three eighths because I'm already doing a thicker elastic. I don't want the rise to be too, too high. I already did a mid rise, so. And I'm gonna have to redo my quarter points, but that's okay. If I was just marking with a, a marking pen for chalk, I, I wouldn't have to remove them. I do recommend this step though. It makes attaching the elastic so much easier. Um, I know it's an added step. Sometimes people don't want to do the added step, but it just makes the next one so much more pleasant. You're going to end up saving time if you just take the time to mark it in any, in any way. Basting like I do or marking with a pen, that also doesn't take very long at all. It's going to save you time and frustration, and your waistband will look a lot better as well. The exposed elastic seems really easy, stick it on top and top stitch, but sometimes it's hard to get it nice and even, and this really helps. So I have it all quartered again. I have it marked. I'm just gonna turn off this machine. Move it over to the side. Don't look at my little fuzzies under there. All right, so now I'm just gonna align all my quarter points. I like putting my um, my seam in the back. It really doesn't matter if you prefer it on the side or the back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the clips and replace them with a pin. No choice here, you have to have a pin. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna line up the bottom of your elastic to that line you just drew. Now, you're not gonna be stretching your elastic very much here. It's about one to one. You might even feel as if you have more elastic than underwear sometimes, and that's because the elastic is so much more stable than the underwear. Um, so you don't want to stretch the elastic as you fit it because it's going to feel too tight compared to the box of brief. And sometimes when you're sewing something that's a lot more stable versus a lot stretchier, it just feels like you have less of the more stable fabric when in actuality the measurement is the same. All right, so I have them pinned at quarter points. As you can see, it doesn't stretch the elastic. That's perfect. You can add as many pins as you like here. Um, if you've never done this before, you might wanna add quite a few, but you have that line that we just marked as you're sewing to guide you. So you don't need to go wild here with the pins. You're not stretching anything. And so, it's not hard to keep it even all around. And since you took the time, you listened and you took the time to mark that mark, <laughs> it, it shouldn't be too difficult. All right, I added a pin in between all of them. So depending on the size you're doing, you might wanna add a few pins like I did. And now we're just gonna top stitch it on. You can top stitch it from the top. You can top stitch it from this side. As long as you're you're happy with your thread colors on your top and your bottom. I usually top stitch from the top because I care more about what the top looks like than the bottom. But whatever you're more comfortable with. So all I'm gonna do is make sure this line zoom in for you a little bit. Make sure that this line that I marked is lining up perfectly with 
the bottom of my elastic. And again, you don't really need to stretch. As you sew, you might feel like maybe you have more or less of one, but they should be really close to being even. And that line just makes it so easy and nice to line up to. I'm using a triple step zigzag again. It's my favorite high stretch um, top stitching stitch. And it's super, super stretchy, and I just like the way it looks, I guess. Ooh, got myself a little bit. I like to hold it in the back, not because I'm stretching it, but just feel like... Um, can keep it nice and perfectly in, in place a little bit better. It's important to get it nice and even around the top or else um, you're not going to be happy with the way it looks once you're all finished. So see since I did the 3 eighths of an inch I'm going to have some to trim here. If I only did a quarter of an inch you really don't need to trim after which is nice. Um, but you have to be really accurate, of course, if you're only giving yourself a quarter of an inch to do that top stitch. If you're doing something like a triple thread cover stitch, you might not even have room on only a quarter of an inch. So you might need the full three eighths if you're going to do a triple thread, which is actually a super popular um, ready to wear stitch for attaching elastic so um, I like to do that sometimes do the cover stitch with a triple thread it's nice and fun to do all right I'm gonna leave this for now I'm not gonna trim it just yet because I have you zoomed in here already and let's just finish off these legs with the same triple step zigzag I'm just gonna grab a few pins I pressed this earlier before the video with a memory hem since I have a nice, um, thick, well-behaved cotton lycra here, it's going to fold right back up for me along that crease. Still nice and perfect. On these cheeky options, you just have barely enough to fold it to him. So it's got a very, very, very tiny little inseam there. Again, you can sew from the top or the bottom, whichever you prefer. I usually always like to sew from the top. If you're using a cover stitch machine, you must sew from the top.
besides give everything a good press is trim anything we need to trim so since I took the 3 8 seam allowance at the top I'm gonna trim that down I like to get a pair of a nice sharp and small little like embroidery scissors and I'm just gonna go in with my scissors and trim it just above that top zigzag part makes it for a nice clean inside and trim any serger tails like this one that got hung out and you can trim up anything that you need to trim up on your legs if you miss. All right, we're all done. I trimmed up um, my seam allowance up at the top. I also went ahead and gave it a good press and now they're ready to be worn. These are the mid-rise um, cheeky option on the adult version. I hope y'all enjoyed sewing along with me and I hope it helped if you had any part that you were a little confused on or a little bit um, nervous about. They're really simple quick sew and they're so fun. You can use up um, maybe some odd leftover pieces because they have the little paneling and whatnot. Use up some of your favorite fabrics, maybe, that you've saved up the little pieces you just can't bear to um, part with. And I can't wait for you to sew some up. And don't forget to share with me because I love to smile along with your makes on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere else you can show me. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.